tough to work for us. We're going to have another episode of Let's Talk Tags. And we're going to look at creating multiple web pages. And then I'm also going to show you how to make your navigation look amazing using CSS. And last of all, I'm going to show you how to use the hover function. When you move your mouse over a link, it will then change color. That's really cool. I'm excited for that. Speaking about learning, let's go to my favorite time of the lesson. Let's talk tags. So what we've got lined up for you, ladies and gentlemen, let's go on to the next page. We can see what prizes we have in store. Today, on our edition of Let's Talk Tags, we have LI, which is list items. We have UL, which is unordered list. And we have A, which is going to create our hyperlinks. So these are going to be used together to make our links between home page, contact us, and events. Let's see who's first up on our list. First, we have sidebar static navigation. And what this does, or how this is classified, is that it is anchored to a section of your screen. And it's a simple, flat navigation type. And all your links are available at all times for the user to see. So here's a little example there. So as you can see, all of our links are showing. It would be, in this case, stuck to the right-hand side of the page. More commonly, it would be the left. And it is very simple. There's not much going on. So it's very easy for users to navigate your site. My favorite, which is the hamburger menu. And as you can see, I've gone and found a picture of a hamburger for you. And this will sit on the top left corner of your UI, which is your user interface. And we as web designers are in charge of this, making this look good. And your UI is basically everything that your user will see, as opposed to things like your code in the background. Another thing is that you can toggle between a hidden menu and an expanded menu. So if you'd like to hide it, it just shows you the three lines. Otherwise, it expands into something similar to your sidebar navigation. And of course, it resembles a hamburger. And if you have a look at the hamburger now, voila, hamburger menu. I think it's awesome. I love whoever came up with this name. And then the next thing we wanting to have a look at is our multimedia menus. And these are categorized by the fact that they utilize media as links. So that would include images and videos. And it's going to rely on visuals to guide the user experience. So a prime example of this would be something like YouTube. So you're selecting an image rather than text. And last but not least, we have drop-down menus. This menu type allows items to be expanded into sub-menus, otherwise smaller menus. And this design works well on sites with both a lot of menu options so that you do not overwhelm your user. So here's a prime example. Once you choose Upload, it then expands down into File 1, 2, 3, and 4. And if you click to Upload again, that white section of the menu would then disappear. This just keeps things a lot tidier. I hope you will remember your Gaming Den website from last lesson and that you've all tried this at home. Today we're going to be building on this by adding in a navigation pane in the top left corner here. And within that navigation, we are going to include an events page as well as a contact page. I think the first step we should take is to go and actually create these pages. How we're going to do that is just go up to New Document and select HTML. So that's now created Untitled 1. So this one we want to be Events. Save that, and within here we can just go events, and then we can do a pop, and it's at gaming den. So that is our title. So we can save that. Then we know that for events we're going to also need CSS, so we can go to CSS and save that as events. There we go. One thing, what do I always forget to do? We want to quickly go and tab these in. See? And three. 
Now that everything's lined up, we're going to quickly do my favorite thing to forget, which is to link them. So we're going to go link rel is equal to style sheet href is equal to, and then we can go in here. I just double click on the URL and we can choose events. And then don't forget to close it. Let's save this look and we can see that it worked because of our title that is showing us over there. Okay, the next one we want to go and do is create our contact page. So again, we're going to go to new documents and then to HTML. And there we go. So now we can go and make this contact us and our pub and gaming and we can save this as contact and save. There we go. And we need our buddy CSS, which we can then just save as well as contact. So that will automatically be contact.css. So I've just created a folder, Gaming Den Learning 3. I have all my images and then all of my HTML and CSS in here. Just nice and tidy. Okay, and then let's quickly link these. I know this seems tedious at the moment, but you will thank me one day. There we go. And it's good practice. So you can go link rel is equal to style sheet. Go href is equal to and we are doing contact. So I know this from the different icons. So there's the A and there's Google Chrome. Go, and we can close that off. And let's test it. And we can see up here that that is working. Yay! But let's go back here. So we've now got all of our different pages. So the first thing we want to do is then say to our home page that we are going to be adding in other pages. So we can go in up here in body. And for our navigation, we want to do an unordered list, so UL. And within a list, you have different list items. So we're going to say LR, so list item. And now we want to what, call another link to a different page. So we're going to say AHREF. And then we're going to go equals, and we're going to pick. So the first one, we will actually link it to the home page, so we'll choose Gaming Den. And that will be our home page. So let's look at this quickly. There we go. So you can see it's popped up there. So our next list item is going to be LI, then AHREF, and that's going to be equal to events. Go. And we need to tell it that, so that's going to be events. And last, let's start um, a href is equal to, and that's going to be contact. Go. And that's going to be contact us. Let's save and have a look. Okay, so we've got home, events, contact us. Okay, so now we can see that that's gone to events, and now it's gone to contact us. But we don't have anything in there yet. Let's tidy this up. There we go. So let's save that, and then let's go on into our CSS, and then we'll go and do the other pages. So if we go into CSS, you've got all the existing CSS from our last lesson. So because we're doing the navigation, I think we can start off up here and the body and the first section we did was UL. So UL, the list style type, so you can see we've got the bullet points, so we want to change that. So we're going to go list style type and we don't want to type, so we want there to be no bullets. And they're gone, yay. 
Then we want our margin to be set to zero. So we want it to be right up against the, the edge of your page. Then we want padding to be zero. So we don't want any space at the top or on the sides. We want our overflow to be hidden. Now there are all these different types of overflow. So what they mean is auto is if your if your text or element runs over the anticipated size, it will then just be clipped. If it's as hidden, any extra content will become invisible to the users. If it's scroll, a scroll bar will be inserted for you, and then visible, it will just reside outside of your container or your box, and that is your default setting. So for now, let's just go ahead and make this hidden. So anything that doesn't fit can be hidden. There we go. And let's set our background color as well, and that can be this, ooh. <laughs> and that can be, do that, the color of this guy. So let's just pick there, and save that. Okay, if, you, if you're not sure what just happened there, let's make this black quickly so you can see. Okay, and you see we've got this little box in place. So let's just change that back to what we had. Let's see, save and refresh. And then we can do text align, and we want that to be center. Let's see. Up there, and we can save it. Okay, so right now it's not looking great, but we are going to fix it. So now we're going to go our eye, so our list items now. We want them to float to the left hand side of the page, and we want the font size to be 20. So they're now sitting on the left-hand side of the page. So float means the elements float towards the left, similar to a line. Okay, so we've got li, so list item, and we want to now edit our links. So that's going to be display as a block. This is now. Not nicely now. That's there we go. We would like the text color to be white. We would like the text to be aligned center. And then we want to add in some padding around the elements. So that's going to be 10 px and 30 px. Let's quickly just see what this looks like before I carry on. How did you? No. <laughs> Padding. There we go. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so now we have our nice gaps in between. So just for fun, all remember, please, that I do go and measure all of this before we start. So let's just mess around and make that 100 px. Aha! I've pushed insert at some point. Ah. So we've now made this 100 pixels, just to see, and we can see now that that has added 100 pixels here and here. Let's make that 10 again, and we can make this 130 just to see, and you can see here it has added on space here and here. So we're quite happy with how I go pre-measure things before our lessons. <laughs> Uh, just to make things easier, otherwise I would spend half the time spacing things out. Okay, so now we've got that padding in. We don't want this underline, so we're going to go in here and go text decoration. And we don't want any, so we're going to say none. And let's save that. And now we just have normal text. So that is your bold and your underline. Then, because this looks quite boring, I think we should highlight this a different color. 
when we hover over it. So we're going to do a hover class. So L I, the so list item, and we're talking about the link. And we want to introduce hover. And within here, we can choose a background color. So background color, and that can be white. Let's just see. And nothing's happening just yet. There we go, because that's refreshed. But now that looks a bit weird, doesn't it? So I think we need to make the text color our blue. So color. And we can go and pick the same color as this guy. And don't forget your semicolon at the end. And I think that looks quite cool. So there we go. And then we're going to make a contact us page. So let's go and delete this. So within here, let's go down to our contact us. So we're going to just go and delete. So that's in gamingden.html. And goodbye. And we see it's gone there. But let's also go and remove over here our dot container. Yeah, we're going to use it later, so don't worry. There we go. All right, so let's go on to the events page. And we can see that that's worked properly. So let's go to events.css. And within here, we're going to do a slightly different form of navigation. With this, we are going to use a div, a div class container. So within body, we're going to go div class, and the class we're wanting to use is a nav bar. And then in here, we still want to, there will always be a link. So we're going to go a href is equal to, oopsie, <laughs> is equal to, and the first on our list is the home page, so we'll go to gaming den. And call it home. And then uh, we've done this a few times, so I'm just going to copy, copy. So ahref, and now we're going to change this link. So you have to delete the equal sign in order to get this pop up. And then it was events. And events. And if we delete up to the equal sign here, we can get our oopsie, contact page. Just change here to contact us. And let's save that. And we've got one, two, three. So you saw with home, it showed one after the other because we'd put it in a list view. Here we're just saying link one, link two, link three within their div class. Okay, so there we go. We've got our link sorted out, but we need a bit of we need just a little bit of information here to make this a bit more interesting. And we're going to do that by using headings. So we're going to go H1 and call that Gaming Events. And then we can do H2 and call it the Sonic Challenge. Then H3 can be 2nd January. 9 p.m. CAT. Keep this for the next ones. Then H3, the 6th of May. There we go. And last, H3, 7 August. Also at 9 p.m. Let's have a look. So now we've got those showing up nicely, and we mustn't forget to have a footer. So the last thing is going to just be adding in our div class. So we're going to go down here and go div class is equal to footer. Finish that off, and then within here we're just going to go p and then put our copyright. And then we can move on to this CSS. Okay, so this is looking pretty boring. We've now gone into our CSS. 
And let's just get this looking a bit more fun. So as you will recall, within events, we had our div class navbar. So within events, we're going to go dot navbar. And then we're going to just quickly say that the font family is later. It's later. That we want the width to be 100% of the screen. So we want it to cover the whole bottom half of the screen. And we're going to choose our background color, which for now we are just going to leave blank because I need to quickly go and put the background image in. So let's go up here and go body. And we can go background image. And this is the events page, so we're going to choose event screen. Go, and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so not, not great. <laughs> so let's see. So when I'm first problem I see is that it's repeating. So let's go background, repeat, and we want no repeat. Let's see. Okay, so now we see here that there's a big white section, which also we don't want. So we're going to go fix that. So what we want to do is say background size. So background size. And that must be 100% of the height and 100% of the width of the page. There we go. And... Are there any other problems? I don't think so. So we can leave that. Okay, so we were in nav bar. And then we just want to say that overflow must be auto. There we go. Okay, so what else? So we had nav bar. And then we had our links, which fall into A. So let's go here and go dot nav bar. A, and within here, we want it to be font family later, and we want to float our text to the left, so float left, and now we're going to just add in some padding, which will be 12 pixels. Remember again that I have measured all of this up before the lesson, just the same bit of time. So we can see here that our padding has worked. So if we take this out, save it, you can see here where the jump is happening. Okay. Then we want the color of the text to be white. And text decoration we don't want. Text de decoration, none. And there we go. So now we've got these are white. And we've got this nice gap. And then I think we must just make it a bit bigger because it's kind of falling into the background. So if we go font size, and that can be 17 pixels. There you go. It's a little bit better. Let's try 27. And we might, we might come back and change that. We'll see how I feel about it. And then we can set our width. So width, width, what I've done is said that 100 divided by 3 is 33.3. .3, but 33% 33, uh, 33 of the page would be one of these elements. So each of them get a slice. Let's just see what that looks like. Okay, let's make this a little bit bigger. Is it a need all that space? And I think what we're going to end up doing is let's, let's take it from 33 to 31. There we go. So that all fits nicely now on the screen. So I think let's leave that as 31. So the logic there was 100 divided by 3 was 33. So we've probably just got a little 2% gap over there, which I'm not too bothered about at the moment. And then let's go text align. And that can be center. Okay. There we 
go. So that's all sitting nicely. Let's just get some more space. Nav bar, the link, so A, and then we want to add another hover effect. So nav bar hover, and we want this background color to be, mm, let's say, gray. go over it, it is now hovering and picking up on the colors. And then we can choose our background color. And now we can actually pick it. So let's go pick, use the eyedropper, select this color, and go OK. So just looking at this, I'm a little bit unhappy with this gap here. And what I think I've done there is I've left a very small margin on the page. So I'm just going to go in here, type in margin, and make that zero. There we go. So now we've got our nice nav bar at the top. Okay, so let's go back in here under our nav bar. And let's go to heading one. We want the color white, want the font size to be 50 pixels, and we want some more room. Okay, then we're going to go padding on the top, can be 5%, padding left can be 40%, that's no, we can say the There we go. And then font family later. Let's see. Heading left. There we go. <laughs> Wondering what I did. Okay, then heading to can be color white, let's just say some time, font family later, font size can be 30 pixels, we can do the same padding. Close this. There we go. Let's see. Okay, let's make this 45. There we go, that's much better. And then we've got our heading three as well. And here we're going to just steal all of this code. We're just going to change it a little bit. Our font size can go down 10 pixels, so it can be 20. Go and let's try 46. Uh, one more. <laughs> there we go. I'm happy with that. And then we just need to incorporate our footer as well. Let's close the source. And then dot footer. And that's going to be the same. So position. Always be careful when you try and do shortcuts like that. Doesn't always go as planned. Left is going to be zero, which is meaning it's going to be anchored in that spot. And we've got bottom at zero as well. The width must be 100% of the bottom of the screen. The background color we can select. Custom select, and we're going to use the same dark color. The writing or the text must be white. 
unwanted in the center. So text a line, center. And let's save that. Let's save all of this. Okay, so the next page you want to then do, so let's just quickly have a look. So we've got home. So we've got our little welcome page, events. And now we want to just do contact us, which is sitting as a blank canvas at the moment. Okay, so we've got contact us, gaming den. And the first thing we want to do is go into our body. And within here, we're going to make another div. So it's going to be div. Class, and this one is going to be a side nav bar. So we're going to go side nav. And close that off. There we go. See, there we go. Okay, and then we, again, we're just going to go a href is equal to, and that's going to be gaming den. And we're going to say home. See? And because we don't want to type this all up for like the sixth time, we're just going to do that. And remember to just delete the equal sign. This is going to be events. Events. And this is going to be the contact page. So, contact. And that can be contact. There we go. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so it is just sitting along the top of the page again. Let's go and quickly put in our other information. So we're going to have H1, which is going to be contact. Us. Then under that, we're going to have H2, which is going to say landline. And that can be five, 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 five. <laughs> because we don't want to accidentally put someone's number in here. Okay, now instead of doing multiple lines with hitting twos, what are we going to do? We're going to put in a break instead, so BR. And then we're going to say email. It's going to be gaming den at order. Dot com. Again, we're going to do a break, so we can go to the next line. And location is 35 Gamers Avenue. There we go. And here we will close heading 2. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so we've got that there. And our last element is just going to be our footer. Div class is equal to footer. And in here we would just have our copyright. So we can just say P copyright. Okay, let's just make that a bit clearer. And let's see. Okay, so let's go and do the CSS here. So the first element we should do is our body, and we want to do background, image, and what have I chosen for this? A oh, nice beach. Okay, so we've got the beach image there. Let's save and have a look. And in this case, it is just a massive image. So we want to go background, repeat. And no, we don't want any repeats. So no repeat. Then we want to set our background size to 100% and 100%. If you remember from the last page, it's 100% by 100%. And let's see what this looks like. There we go. And remembering here, we're going to get that weird margin again, so we're going to type in margin zero. Okay, then if we look here again, we see 
see that this was side nav. So if we want to reference it here, we're going to go dot side nav. And then here we're going to say we want the height to be 100% of the page. So we want that to cover the whole column. We're going to set the width to 150 pixels. Remember that I have measured this previously. The position must be fixed, so it must never move. And our background color, what should we color this? Let's have a look. Let's pick a color. And I think this nice blue would work. So let's just see. There we go. Okay, so it, <laughs> it doesn't look great at this point, but we're going to fix it. So let's go overflow. And that is hidden. And then padding on the top can be 30. Padding. 30 pixels. Yeah, so it's got a little bit of space up here. Then we want to go and make these links look better because they look terrible. So we're going to do a dot side nerve and the link, so A. And within here, we're going to say padding is going to be 16 pixels, 8 pixels, 8 pixels, and Now added in a bit more space there, and then we've got font size, which is going to be 25 pixels. Text decoration, we don't want any. So click here, and we want none. We want the color to be white, and we want it to be displayed in a box. So display in a block. So in a box. Okay, and what this line does is, is it displays the element as a as a block, um, similar to if we use paragraph, and it's going to make sure that everything starts on a new line and takes up the width of the element. So let's see. So there we go. That's looking a lot better. Now that our little nav bar has been seen to, we just want to quickly add in the hover, and then it will be done. Space, so let's go dot side nav. We're going to go A because we want the links to be hovered, and we're going to say hover. And within here, we're just going to set the color, and the color can be let's go see. Uh, let's make it maybe this quite nice blue. Let's see what it looks like. There we go. I'm, ha I'm happy with that. So we leave it for now. Okay, so now we just need to move all of this other information out of behind our side nav. So we're going to go H1. And we're going to quickly just do font. Size is 45 pixels. Padding on the top is going to be 100 pixels. Padding on the left is going to be 8%. Let's just see what this looks like. Okay, okay. so we can't see too much at this point. So let's make this 80. See? So he had it moved at 8% of the screen, it was behind here. 80, let's try 40. I'm quite happy with that. I think that looks quite centered. But actually, I want it to be right in the middle. So let's say 45. There we go. Okay, so we've got padding left is 45. Then we can say within that element, just to make sure, we're going to text the line center. See, that ruined it. So we're actually going to take that out. Ah, awesome. OK, 
certificate, and then what else? We just need to quickly change our font family for uniformity. Later. And the color must be white. Color. There we go. And let's just make more space. Heading 2 needs to be edited quickly, so we're going to go padding. Can be 50 pixels. Padding on the left. Can then be, let's say, 30%. Let's just see how that goes. Can it? more, let's say 40, and let's go with 45. There we go. Yes. I'm happy with that. Then let's go the font size. 30. Font family. Who wants to tell me what the font family is going to be? It's going to be later. There we go. And the color is going to be white. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so now we've got some overlap going on. So let's take this back to 40 and see if that fixes it. No, let's go to 35. There we go. But now part of the fun of being a web designer. There we go. And don't forget, we've got a footer that we need to talk about. So let's go here, dot footer. And with our footers, the position is fixed. Fixed. Left, there must be no gap on the left. There must be no gap on the bottom. Also zero. Hmm. There we go. What did I even do there? <laughs> the width must be 100%. And the color must be white. The text. And text the line. We're going to mix it up. And it's going to be left. Et voila. So if you're not happy with that, let's go and see our links. I've got this padding, so let's just add that in here and see what happens. And that just brings it up a little bit. But just to demonstrate, if we get rid of the first one, it's going to get even higher. Get rid of the second one, what's going to happen? It's going lower. <laughs> so this is how you all are going to learn what each element does. So I think we should just go in and do a bit of a left padding here. So left, left, and we can make that maybe eight. There we go. Let's go and chat about what we're going to be covering in the next lesson. All right, so it's time for your sneak peek into lesson four, during which time we will be covering Let's Talk Theory, and we will cover the four steps of the web design process in detail, and this will include layout types, 